iPhone 15 is the latest and cheapest Apple iPhone of the 15 series. And this begs a question, if they put the flagship hardware inside this phone, how good is it really? And I'm talking about cameras only. I'm going to reveal when the 15, despite being just the most budget option from the 15 lineup, can actually outshine the last year flagship and explain to you when it's not the best choice. Now let's kick things off with the smallest cameras both of the phones have to offer. Let's go outdoors. Okay, so here I have the iPhone 15 and 14 Pro. Let's see how the selfie camera compares to each other now this is the video quality on the 15 and the audio as well right now it's relatively quiet but soon there will be a lot of uh, trains public transport and I already see the image difference on the screen first of all the 14 Pro is much brighter even though the brightness is supposed to be to the max on both of the phones but it's much brighter on the 14 Pro on the 15 Pro if I'm having the Sun hitting directly the screen I don't see much to be honest and I have the same exposure settings everything the same 4k and also right now you're hearing the audio quality on the 15 and now this is the audio quality on the 14 Pro is there any difference I don't know personally I think it would be cool if the phone had some sort of voice isolation feature and yeah you let me know what you think about the image quality which one you prefer the 15 or the 14 Pro you would be forgiven for not noticing the differences at the first glance and I'm no exception selfie cameras on these two iPhones are incredibly similar. The only noticeable difference is a slight color variation. But I'll tell you a secret, it's very unlikely that more than one or two people out of a thousand can tell them apart. And those who claim that they can in the comments, I do not believe you. The only real difference I could spot is when I have sun right behind me hitting the sensor and it seems like the iPhone 15 brings up the shadows on the face making it more vivid and saturated, whereas the 14 Pro looks a little bit washed out. The real challenge begins when we look at the main camera's performance and the built-in image processing. Now the image stabilization is incredibly solid on both phones. It's honestly shocking that all of what you're seeing right now was filmed handheld and it's without any attempt of me to walk and make it look smoother. It's just regular walk and I personally would expect this level of stabilization from a flagship but having it on the base model is really surprising. And just keep in mind the image stabilization works well only when you have enough light. Once there is a little bit of hint of low light or even dusk sunset time, the quality significantly decreases. So pro tip, if you're filming in low light environment with any of these phones, avoid rapid movements to get rid of motion blur that decreases all the crispiness of your video. Now check out these side-by-side -side shots. Both videos were filmed in the same 4K resolution with HDR disabled. In terms of details and sharpness, they're equally impressive. But there is a difference in the image quality that is very apparent, and it's color temperature. 14 Pro seems to be cooler, and iPhone 15 is warmer. So I would say it's mostly software-based difference, like the optics are great on both of the phones on the main camera, as well as the image stabilization. But auto white balance is what makes it different. And honestly, I feel like they could have applied the same color processing from this phone on the 14 Pro with just a software update and both phones in that case would give exactly the same result. So in terms of filming videos, I came to a conclusion that the results depend on the lighting mostly and how it affects the temperature of the image. And after all, you are at the mercy of the software to decide for you the temperature and tint. At this point, I say it in every video, Apple should consider adding manual controls to the higher end models like this $1500 Pro Max. And I mean seriously, we've got ProRes log in this phone but no white balance controls. Now leave a comment if you think Apple should step up their game in this department. That aside, iPhone 15 has really nice video quality. All the footage that you're seeing right now was filmed without any color grading and just comes straight from this phone. So far they perform very similar, more or less the same, but I found this scenario in which they act very different. Just have a look. So right now we're filming on the 15 and the 14 Pro, all HDR modes are disabled, so we will see how the dynamic range looks like on the main cameras of both of these phones. And in terms of lighting environment right now, I have the sun right behind me. So this is perfect condition to test how the dynamic range performs on both of the phones and which one is better. And also the audio quality. As I said, the 15 has bigger microphone cutout, so maybe it has better audio quality. So this is the audio you're hearing from the 15 and the main camera. And right now this is the audio and 
and the image quality on the 14 Pro. You let me know which one you prefer. The 15 has bigger microphone cutout, so maybe it has better audio quality, but either way, you let me know down in the comments. The image processing on the iPhone 15 makes the skin more bright and just overall adds a little bit of exposure to bring out more details and saturation, especially on my face. And I guess it's just a matter of preference overall, but I'm happy personally with both results. All right, now it's time to explore the photo capability. To be honest, the iPhone 15, despite not being a flagship, is giving really, really good results in sunny days in well-lit environments. Just look at this photo. I really love how the image processing treats the sunrise warm lighting. And because most of the consumers will use this phone to take the photo during the daytime, and I bet the RAW mode wouldn't be a first choice for 99% of the users. That is why the new Heath Max mode comes in really handy. So it's a small file size, but it's very crisp even if we zoom in 200% or even more. By the way, after updating the 14 Pro, this mode is present there as well. And same as in the video test, they somewhat similar in landscape photography. But once you take a photo of a human, then image processing kicks in. Personally, I would expect the software update to equalize the camera capabilities. But clearly, they're not the same. Now, you already saw the video test, so keeping all that in mind, can you guess which one is the iPhone 15 and which one is the flagship? All right, so A is iPhone 15 and B is iPhone 14 Pro. Let me know in the comments if you guessed correctly. So now two things are apparent. As you noticed, iPhone 15 has richer contrast on me, while the 14 Pro thinks that the subject is backlit and tries to lift up the shadows, making me look more washed out. The light flare is less prominent on this 15, and both lenses are cleaned before I took each series of photos, so this is out of questions. So that makes me think either the coding is better on the 15 or just the camera placement is a little bit deeper inside the hardware so that forms some sort of a lens hood inside but at this point i'm being very nerdy so i hope you haven't fallen asleep yet now let's talk about low light photography the ultra wide angle lens is good only if you use long exposure mode however the main camera shines in low light conditions on both phones and same when using two times crop there is once again the slight difference in contrast on both 14 pro and 15 but overall they perform very decent now let's talk about portrait mode at first i was really under the impression that LiDAR sensor is something revolutionary, but the more I try other phones, even the likes of cheaper Pixel 7a, the more I realize that most of the time it's just useless gimmick, at least for my use. Now here's a quick side-by-side -side blind camera test in portrait mode. Guess which one is this iPhone 15 and which one is the 14 Pro flagship with LiDAR? Well, this is the most fascinating part for me. iPhone 15 surprisingly excels in separating subject even without the LiDAR sensor. Just look how it cut out all the hair here. This is crazy and definitely the difference shouldn't be that big. Both phones are on the same latest iOS version. So I have no idea why the 14 Pro cannot process the image the same way as this 15 does. It makes you question whether LiDAR sensor is any useful at all. However, after testing the phones even more, I found the scenarios in which the LiDAR sensor can come to the rescue. And it is in the situations when the lighting is challenging. Now just look at these two photos and tell me objectively which one is better. And I would say this one. It's richer in colors, better contrast and it is the 14 Pro. Honestly, in these lighting conditions, the 14 Pro stays considerably better than iPhone 15. So this is the only valid reason to justify the presence of LiDAR sensor on iPhones from my personal experience. The phone scans the subject in front of the lens and then tries to compensate for that exposure by enhancing the contrast and saturation of the subject. Obviously, Apple doesn't give any details on how this algorithm works, but if I were to explain and conduct from my test, it would look something like that. By the way, how often do you use portrait mode, if at all? See what others say down in the comments. Now talking about the ultra wide angle lens, I always said it's one of the best out of any phones. It's optics and hardware that made it great on the 13, 14 Pro and now this 15. It's no exception. It's sharp and crisp on both phones and works great paired with built-in image stabilization. But it does need ton of light. So once you film in low light environment, the phone bumps up ISO and reduces shutter speed, which results in mushy and blurred image. This is why 
why manual controls for the camera are essential. Oh, and by the way, I just saw Apple's BTS how they filmed their keynote on the iPhone 15 Pro Max and they used their BM app. So I guess Apple has zero intention to add it to the phone. Maybe they're thinking it will confuse other people, but at the same time, I do not get why this phone is called Pro Max and why ProRes Log was added and not something basic like white balance. Okay, so far iPhone 15 has shown great image quality both on the ultra wide and main camera. However, one area where the 14 Pro is undoubtedly better is the zoom camera. You see, iPhone 15 offers the zoom as well and you can go even three times closer, but it would be a digital zoom. Unlike the 14 Pro, just have a look. I start with the main camera, then go to ultra wide right before switching to three times telephoto. And the image difference in detail and sharpness is immense. Hence, the 14 Pro has a proper optical zoom. And it even performs better than 15 Pro Max at three times zoom. So if you're using portrait mode often enough, as well as 3x telephoto camera, then the 14 Pro is the choice. But if you prefer smaller and lighter phone with Type-C port charger, in that case, the 15 base model is for you. Now, one thing that I would choose on the 15 over the 14 Pro is the material and just how it feels in the hand. There is no really glossy material. It feels like very fine sandpaper and these sides as well. It feels really nice, very sleek. Like when you put it in your pocket, you do not feel it at all with the case on. It's a little bit more bulky, but if you use it just as is without any case on, it feels really nice. While the 14 Pro has this glossy sides here, it's all covered with fingerprints. Whereas this one, it just looks brand new, like it was taken out of the box a few seconds ago. And other than that, they feel more or less the same in size and weight. This one feels heavier, of course. So which one would you go for? Do you value a compact size or a telephoto camera is your preference? Or maybe you can't imagine your phone without Type-C port. Now let me know in the comments and see what others think too. Do not forget to subscribe if you haven't already and stay on the lookout for a crazy video that I filmed on the phone. And meanwhile, make sure to watch this video next as I think it will be perfect for you. Bye-bye.